Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. Kyle, it is time to get to know our enemy. It is time for the Michigan State Spartans. We're getting right into not it. The, We're not wasting any time. Yeah. Yeah. Michigan State, three and six so far this year. Only one in conference victory. Not not a very not a very good uh, Michigan State team, especially everything that happened before yes. the season started. Before the yes. season started, and yeah, it has not gone well. But but they do they're they are on a winning streak. They've they are on a one game winning streak right now. Hey. Coming coming off a victory over Nebraska twenty to seventeen last weekend. Which was a surprise. I'll say that. I thought I thought Nebraska had that game. Um I, I don't know, I feel like one team's trending up and the other team's trending down and yeah, uh, it is what it is. Uh, this is, uh, how do I want to say this nicely, Kyle? How do I want to say this nicely? Uh, this is the worst team Ohio State's played in a month. I don't think that was the nicest way I could have said that. I was trying to think of a nice way to say it. I didn't find it. It's fair. Yeah. It's, it's also true. That's fair. Um. Ohio State's had a rough go of it lately, as far as scheduling is concerned. A surprisingly good Rutgers, a uh, solid yet unspectacular, uh, but especially defensively solid Wisconsin team, a very good Penn State team, um, and then a month ago was Purdue. So, wait, so. It's yeah, it's it's been a and by the way, I'm just going to say this. I was. I'm on a three week streak of saying, hey, everyone, I know you might not think Rutgers. I know you might not think Wisconsin, although you probably do know Penn State has a really good passing defense, you guys. And you should keep that in mind and not flip out if Ohio State's passing game isn't immediately um, gorgeous and flawless. I'm on a three week stretch trying to give people that warning. I'm, uh, we're gonna we're gonna stop it at three. <laughs> um, I'm going through I'm going through the Michigan State stats, going through the comparisons, and Don't. like, <laughs> Don't. I'm trying to find just, some... just just save you, just save you the trouble with Jared and Don't or or the. The listeners here, the listeners here, uh, don't, uh, pretty much dead last, like offensively, like all the almost dead last in every category when it comes offensively. I, not, I, I mean, I don't near, know. Near, near. And listen, they're not in the top hundred in any off offensive statistical category that matters. There you go. Um, the the nicest thing I can say about them. Um, as far as their offensive standings go, uh, they don't give up a lot of sacks. They're 44th in the country in quarterback sack percentage. And as far as passing yards per game, they're in the top 100. So good job. As on, honestly, I'm not even kidding. Offensively speaking, those are the nicest things I can say about this team. Yeah, it's not. This this has been a this is a really bad Michigan State team. This has been I know Michigan State's had some doozy of teams in recent memory, but man, this this might be the this might be the tops them all here. Not a. Not a very, very good team here. Their best wins, Jared. Well, Nebraska. Nebraska was their best win uh, just this last weekend. But before that, their only other victories, Central Michigan and Richmond. Lost bad to Washington. Lost bad to Maryland. They lost to Iowa. Oh, Kyle, I'm really glad you brought up Iowa. 
yeah, I always I was uh, 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 ranked in the uh, in the CFP now, right? Kyle, we you know we always make fun of Iowa for not scoring any points. Points per game. Michigan State fourteen point nine. Iowa eighteen point four. Now, Michigan State does have more yards per game, significantly more, although it says a lot more about Iowa than it does Michigan State. Um, but points per play, Michigan's at 130th in the country. Iowa's at 96th in the country. Um, at least Iowa has good rushing statistics. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, yeah, I mean, good, I mean, that's, good. What? What? That's not true either. I, I'm sorry. I was really trying to do something to say something nice about Iowa's offense there for a second, but it's just it's not even true. Will the outcome? Uh, will the outcome of this game get compared to Michigan's game versus them? I've never been a fan of doing that personally. Um, because matchups are a thing, game situations are things. Um, I've, I'm, I'm never, I'm never a fan of like, uh, this team scored this sort of point differential against that team, especially like if it's early in the season versus late in the season, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yes. I hate it. Every game is different. Yeah, exactly. Weather matters when you like, look at Arizona, a team also Kyle, speaking of teams suddenly ranked in the college football playoff rankings, you. we've we been telling you all about Arizona for a month, but look at Arizona, Arizona, terrible in September. Great ever since. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't, I don't like, I don't like playing the point differential between common opponents game too much. And, and if you're going to do it, Try and get it like, well, we, we both played this team in November or maybe try and get it. So you have a bunch of games and you can like average them out over, you know, five or six games or something like that. You know what I mean? Oh, Kyle, at least the Michigan State defense isn't terrible. Eh? Is it? Well, is it Jared? I said it's not <laughs> terrible. I didn't say it was good. Um, bottom half I mean, in a lot of categories, not all the categories. Um, bottom half in, in points per game. Top half of the country in, in yards per game. So, you know, 50th so, in the country. That's not... Them, so them I mean, being I mean, every 50th in the country, or excuse me, 49th in the country in, a, in, in an opponent's yards per game... Um, listen, am, am I saying being 49th in the country in yards per game is some sort of amazing achievement? No. Am I saying looking through all these statistics, it's about the nicest thing I can say about them? Yes. Like, let me have this, Kyle. Their, their, their rush defense isn't, isn't terrible. Opponent yards per rush, uh, only allowing 3.7 yards per rush, putting them 35th in the country. That's that's pretty good. It's pretty good, Kyle. It is. So so in the defense here, um, I mean, people are going to recognize the name Cal Halliday. Uh, sure. I think he's been with the pro been with the program for a long time here. Leads leads the team here. Has already 65 tackles for for the year here. But I think they have a they have a pair of uh, defensive backs that are. Pretty decent here. Um, Jaden Mangum and Angelo Gross, they're two DBs. Uh, you, you know, we always talked about in the past that if, you're, if your defensive backs don't have much stats, that, that's usually a good thing. Well, they've had they've had to make a lot of tackles. They're they're yeah. they're some of the they're the leading, well not their leading. So Angelo is third on the team in total tackles. And then Jaden is number seven in the team too, but each of them have. Uh, well, Angelo has two interceptions, and Jaden has four interceptions for the year too. 
I mean, make a lot of tackles, but they, they, they've they caused some turnovers as well. So definitely two names to keep an eye out for when Ohio State has the ball. Yeah. Um, as far as their passing defense as a whole, uh, they are 39th in the country at um, the opponent's completion percentage. So they hold they hold teams under 59 percent completion percentage by and large. That's not bad. Um, opponent yards per pass, 84th, which isn't which isn't great. Um, passing yards per game at 65th in the country. Uh, bottom bottom half there. Um, I'll say this they They are, as Kyle was pointing out there, not not just those two guys, but as a team. Uh, pretty good at intercepting the ball. Uh, they intercept every three point, uh, three point six seven percent of the passes thrown at them, which is pretty good. Uh, yeah, people don't know how that, to scale that. that. Good. People uh, people don't necessarily know how to scale that number. That puts them twenty first in the country. But you bad. reverse that. But you reverse that though, and how? They, they were. But but Sparty is also turning over the ball. 3.66% of the time they throw the ball too. So yeah. Uh, turn turnovers is a whole Kyle turnovers is <laughs> a whole. Um, Michigan state is uh, on average losing the turnover differential uh, at, at a, at, at just over half of a turnover per game, which is 91st in the country. Uh, listen, giveaways they give away the ball over twice a game 2.1 times per game on average they they take away the ball which is terrible by the way it puts them 121st in the country but they take away the ball uh 1.8 times average per game which puts them 22nd in the country so if there's a bunch of turnovers this game in both directions just know that's how sparty rolls that's just yeah. what Sparty does. Hey, they, there's a lot of there'll be a lot of turnovers in this game if this is a Michigan State style football game. I'm curious, looking at their past uh, three games here, what was the what what what, what was the total here? I'm I'm really curious. So against Nebraska, uh, yeah. Sparty actually caused three turnovers against Nebraska, but. Ended up only winning by three, but they, they caused three turnovers. Well, how many uh, did they? they plus, how many did they give up? None. Uh, none well, that's oh, that's yeah. how they beat Nebraska. Yeah, you uh, don't. They lost. You don't lose too often when you're plus three in turnovers. Yeah, they lost two and caused three against Minnesota. They lost. They lost um, pretty bad in that one, and then against Michigan, they lost. They lost two and didn't. Um, then it come up with any against uh, their little brother. Yeah, I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can keep doing that uh, joke, Kyle. I, um, still, I still will. I okay. still will. Cheating ass, Michigan. Uh, Kyle, Michigan State is number one. Everyone, in one. everyone knew. What? Michigan State is number one in at least one category. Um, teams get penalized against Michigan State a lot. I don't know what that means. But the other team hmm. yards per penalty. So so they, they tend to be it's not so much that there's a lot of penalties, it's just that they happen to be big yardage 10, penalties, I guess. 10. Listen, 7? I'm trying to find something nice to say. Opponent yards <laughs> per penalty average against Michigan State is 10.7 yards, which puts Michigan Pers State number one fouls? in the nation at that statistic. Personal fouls, pass interference, like what the heck's going on? <laughs> I don't know. I the refs taking mercy on them. I I don't know what it is. Yeah. All right. Well, we haven't we haven't even talked about the offense here. And honestly, uh, you you mentioned it here only scoring fourteen point nine points per game. Uh, probably a good reason why we didn't start by talking about the offense here. Uh, so they've been got, kind of going with. Two quarterbacks here, uh, Kim Noah and uh, and Hauser Catton, but 
yeah, it's either, either one just has not done has not done well. Uh, Noah is um, is six touchdowns, six interceptions, and well, Catton is uh, three touchdowns and two interceptions. We haven't seen Noah Kim in a few weeks now, Kyle. I don't I don't know if that's yeah. Uh, so I mean, I think Catton's going to be the guy we see in this game. Um, he lit up Nebraska, uh, 13 of 20 for 165 yards, which like, Hey Jared, why, why you gotta be a dick? Like, yeah, you know, that's not really lighting him up. You're being a sarcastic dickhead. Well, I mean, it's his best game of the year so far. So yeah, I mean, by uh, just saying like he lit him up, you got, you gotta be happy for yeah. the guy. He's, he's just a freshman. So, I mean, if you're looking like that, you know, Noah Kim, uh, senior, he, you know, they, he started the season. Um, Hauser was getting reps uh, from game one. And then he, he took over in a more serious manner. Um, when was it? Was it the Iowa game? Or I forget. I forget exactly when that happened. It happened about October. Um, so let's say the Rutgers game takes over in a serious manner. Um, and, you know, he's he's a freshman on a on a bad football team and he's he's doing his best. Um, we'll, we'll we'll see. You know, he might grow into a good quarterback. Um, but for, for right now, he's a young quarterback on a bad team. And that's just a, that's a tough spot to be in. I'm not I'm it not going to rip yeah. into the dude because, like I said, he might end up being a really good quarterback one day. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's 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 tough. It's tough um, staying in when you went 38 percent completion against Washington, 56 Maryland, 56 against Iowa. Not not that great percentage throwing, but I mean. The other quarterback hasn't done that much better either. But I mean, when you have an older player versus a younger player, you might as well cut your losses and, and get your younger player some right. experience then. And, and Hauser was, I should actually look this up. Um, I, he was a like top 20 quarterback in the country. Um, I'm going to look at this up. Let's look. Yeah, I, I got it. I got you. He was 58th pro quarterback in the country. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, no. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong one. I apologize. Um, I wanted. I wanted to say he was like top. 15? Yeah, eleventh. Eleventh quarterback. Eleventh. Okay. Eleventh quarterback in the in the country. Yeah. Back in uh, twenty two. Yeah. So redshirt freshman. Um. Yeah. He's. He's a, you know fairly highly touted guy red shirt freshman taking over halfway through not well a third of the way through the year and again it's not like there's a lot of support around him the the offense was no better when the senior was on the field so he's doing what he can um but again there's just not a lot of not a lot of support around him uh i mean you 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 look around and like i said there's just not a ton of talent on the offense, um, which is just obvious, I guess. You're only scoring, you're not quite scoring 15 points a game. I'm, I'm really trying, Kyle, to not just, like, I'm trying not to be mean here. It's just, it's not I, I a know. very good Spartan football team. I know, and even their even their running back at Nathan Carter, not not that well, especially recently here. The past uh, couple of games here, fifty yards, forty four yards, thirty six yards, fifty two yards. Their past four games here, and, and not and it's not so much that he, uh, not getting the ball much either. He's fifteen, eleven, seventeen, twenty carries. So yeah, not. Not really, slut. Not much sledding for for him either. So it's they can't pass the ball well. They can't run the ball well. 
in order for Michigan State to somehow stay in this game, they got to they got to create turnovers. Welcome, Kabuto. Which, which, which I mean, we've seen in recent games that um, that Ohio State has had some issues um, holding on to the ball or or making bad reads there. So I don't anticipate that being the case in this game here, but that's only that's the only way I see Michigan State staying in this game. I I I don't see I don't see Michigan State staying in this game. I'll I'll well, just say it. Well let's let's get right into that predictions then, Jared. Get right into the predictions, huh? Yep. Ohio State player to watch for this game. Who do you got? Go with Emeka Abuka. Uh this will be his second game back. Uh I want to see Emeka I want to see Emeka be back. Uh, this is a game in which Ohio State has an opportunity to, you know, get right. This is this is uh... sorry, Kyle. <laughs> Are we, or, do we have a new Kyle McCord nickname? I just saw you writing in the yeah. chat or in the show notes. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I, it was a good opportunity to get the passing game back in rhythm, and I really want to see someone not named Marvin Harrison Jr. to wow me in this game as far as the passing game goes. And, you know, I and and I know, I know, like, Emeka is the player to watch. I really want to see the offensive line rip stuff up in this game, too. Um, we, again, we haven't played a team that we've been, like, totally... We haven't had like a total overpower game since Purdue and we looked good against Purdue and then played three really good defenses in a row. I want to see the offense score effectively. I want to see the offense score efficiently. I I, I want to, I want to drop 40 points in this game. I want to drop 50 points in this game. I say um, 40 minimum, 40 minimum. Yeah. It's just, it's not, it's not a good Michigan State football team. Ohio State's favored by 31 in this. Um, this is I, I've had to I've had to play the I told you so game each of the last three weeks. Everyone was expecting total blowouts. And I was just like, guys, no, Rutgers actually has a really good pass defense. Guys, no, Wisconsin actually has a really good pass. Guys, no, Penn State actually has a really good defense. All right. N- none of those this week. None of those this week. Ohio State has the opportunity to go out and 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 look like last year's Ohio State on offense in this game, and they need to go do it. If Dare I say, Michigan Jared? State Dare gets say... behind, they may call Mel Tucker for help. <laughs> um, dare I say this is probably the the worst Big Ten game of the season for Ohio State. That they'll um, go up against. I mean, probably Indiana's not good either, but man, they they Ohio State wasn't really trying that hard against Indiana. Purdue is also bad, as Odin points out in the chat. Um this is the last like real easy and you know Minnesota's not good this year either, but of the three teams I just mentioned, Minnesota is better than those three teams. You know, so we put like Indiana, Michigan State and Purdue kind of all on the same lower rung of Ohio State opponents. Uh, Minnesota is at least a half step up from them. My my player, my player to watch here, just because of last game, Ohio State wanted to um, run at will and they they, they kind of did <laughs> with uh, with. Uh, Henderson and I, th- I think this game based on based on how decent the Sparty defense is regarding to um, their the rushing defense here I, I think I think we'll we'll see we'll see Kyle McCord start to throw the ball a little bit more here I think we'll start seeing the the wide receivers get a little bit more action compared to last weekend here so I got I got I got Kyle McFly in here. Let let that ball fly. Uh, it's my Ohio State player to watch. 
I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to co-sign that nickname or not, Kyle. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Um, Sparty player to watch here. I, I got Mangum, uh, the DV for, for Sparty here. I think it's like two weeks in a row. I'm like, who, 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 who's going to go up against Marvin Harrison Jr. here? So I'll go with Mangum here. Loden says Minnesota also has the future Michigan head coach. So we need to kill them. Is that is that a is that a rumor out in the in the mills? I had not heard that one. I, that would be funny. That would be very funny to me. Um, I for uh enemy player to watch. I have Aaron Bu- uh Brule, uh linebacker, uh pass rush. Uh, I don't know if pass rush specialist is an appropriate way, but um, one of the leading sack creators on the team. Uh, I, I I think watching, I think Ohio state's offensive lines getting good at blocking the defensive lines of other teams. But this question starts to become, you know, can they then get off their blockers and get to the linebackers in time? You know, can, can Ohio, can the Ohio state offensive line, can the Ohio state running game block the linebackers, and and create additional yards and and force the secondary to start making tackles and additionally can the ohio state offensive line keep kyle mccord safe and protect his ankle and keep him clean so that he can get the ball to Emeka abuka and everyone else out there so um keep an eye on linebacker aaron brule hey uh, Big Ten team, uh, Big Ten teams meet Ohio State with highly ranked defenses, but they haven't seen an offensive line like Ohio State, so they get smoked. I think you're giving the Ohio State offensive line a little too much credit there. Um, mm-hmm. Are we a team like that this year? Oh, an offense like Ohio State, not an offensive line like, okay, I don't know why I interjected that. My bad, Kabuto. A uh, team who hasn't faced a good offense artificially uh, inflating our defense. Um, Oh, are we that, are we a team like that this year? No. Um, you can look at the points that Penn state has put up against other teams and absolutely make the case that Ohio state held them well below their, like their average Uh, Western Kentucky is a team that can throw the ball and Ohio state kept their passing game under control. Um, there's a lot of good offenses Ohio State's played this year. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't say they've played like an elite offense. Of course, I don't know. Penn State puts up a decent. Penn State puts up decent points a lot of the time. All right, key matchup, Jared. Moving on here, key matchup of this game. What you got? Key matchup. Um, I'm going to go Kyle McCord versus the Sparty linebackers. Um, I want to see the ball slung all over the place. Uh, the And I think getting those drag patterns to work as they need to, um, getting the ball over the first level and to the second level without someone jumping in front of it, like we saw during, uh, we saw last week's interception, uh, I think the Sparty linebackers uh, are are some of maybe the best, uh, maybe the best unit on their team. Um, and Kyle McCord just kind of represents the offense as a whole. So I'm going to go Kyle McCord versus the Sparty linebackers. That question was worded weird. Thanks for playing along. No worries. Well, I, I got Kyle McCord too, but I got kind of versus turnovers he, he's he's kind of prone to turnovers recently here um whether that's fumbling or just bad reads and throwing interceptions i, I need him just want to watch him take care of the ball here make good reads good throws here and just i i want to see i want to see no turnovers by mccord in this game here i want i want to have a a 
I want to see him, like Jared said, sling it all over the place, but with with um, good accuracy and um, good decision making here. So, Kabuto says, "Get out healthy." That too. Um, that's yeah. certainly that, been an issue that, as of late. Yeah. All right, in the spread in this game, as CBS Pick'em locked them in at thirty-one and a half to the Buckeyes here. Definitely one of the largest spreads in a, in a while here for for Ohio State. But you know, I, th- I think Ohio State Ohio State should be able to to cover this up. Not worried about Michigan State's offense at all. Just like the past couple of um games that Ohio State played, wasn't worried about Rutgers' offense or Wisconsin's offense or Purdue. I'm not worried about Michigan State's offense in this one either. So I think Ohio State should be able to cover cover that 31 and a half i have i have ohio state uh 45 to nothing i have have a i have a shutout Ohio state gets gets the shutout that they're looking for all year i know that the defense is really wanting a shutout here they came close a few times here but i i think i think i think the defense finally gets their shutout in this game 45 nothing is my prediction kyle i think that's a more accurate score prediction than what mine's about to be um because the bit is important and i will stick to the bit uh yep um 45 is a is a fun number it was a, well okay what's the predictive what's the predictive score on this what's what's the uh what's the over under set to 47 and, like, and a half so at 47 and a half minus 31 and a half. So what are they, what are they saying? Like six to. Um, I, yeah, I, that would be. Math. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's o- Odin by the, good, continue. Yeah. On. Yeah. O- Odin is. Uh, saying that Ohio State wins by 35, and he's he's saying 42 to seven down in the chat. Um, I, I I'm gonna, I'm doing I'm doing the joke I'm doing the joke Ohio State's gonna win 69 to nothing. All right, I did the joke, but I think Kyle's prediction uh, I think is pretty accurate. I, for whatever reason, I have the number 41 stuck in my head, like 41 to three, 41 to nothing as a maybe more realistic one, but the bit is important. 69 to nothing. Ohio state will win 69 to yeah. nothing. Thanks for the think, nice. In yeah, the chat. there we go. It's yeah. It's a, it's like a 30, 39 to eight type of okay. score. So something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yep. 39 to eight is kind of the projection. Okay. Right, uh, who's our guest picker this week? Sun card. Our homie sun card. One of the OG fans of the sloop cast. Um, he says the reason why I pick this game every year is because for a decade, this was the team that has really taken something from the bucks. When I see the time 1716 on my watch, I'm reminded of Michigan state. Unfortunately, by the way, I appreciate that you stick with a 24 hour clock. I respect that. Um, unfortunately, uh, those days are over. The Buckeyes look better than last week, but do not cover, uh, Bucks win by 28. He says. Like either, either Ohio State's offense isn't scoring or the defense is not the defense that they've been playing then. He didn't give it, he didn't give a score here, but it's only a 28 point victory. That's. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious on what his, what side he's going at. Is it? I mean, it the offense isn't scoring points, or is if, Sparty if somehow game, scoring points? I don't know. Like, if the ten, if the game's like thirty-eight to ten, that's not. You know what I mean? Like, that's totally possible. A thirty-eight to ten game is totally possible. I would say. So I mean, again, like you say, only twenty-eight. I mean, the line's thirty-one and a half. Like he's not. I, I I don't think a a prediction of 
a 28 point differential is is crazy. Yep. All right. Um time for right, that's it for our that's it for our um predictions here. As always, our next section here is the is Austin's over unders here. Uh he says over unders for whoever we are playing. <laughs> uh first one here he has Trey rushing attempts at 18 and a half. Under. Yeah, I'm gonna go under here. Uh just First off, he says rushing attempts. He doesn't say touches. So receptions don't count. He had five receptions last week. And I just like. You got to have your running back on a bit of a pitch count, um, especially a, a running back who's only a, a couple weeks off of an injury. Uh, and, and I just quite frankly think they're not going to need him a lot in this game. And you want to make yep. sure he's yep. he's healthy for the rest of November. Yeah, you, you got you got two three uh, running backs that you can that you can uh get the ball off to as well so yeah four under. five uh jt tackle for loss sex or forced fumbles at two and a half um the tfl i'm gonna i'm gonna go i'm gonna go under only because one Michigan State's not going to have the opportunity to run a lot of plays in this game, kind of reducing his ability to get a lot of stats. Um, I also think Michigan State's just kind of bad. And when a defense is kind of bad, the defensive statistics have a tendency to just sort of get spread out. Um, when the offense is bad, I feel like I said defense before. When the offense is bad, it's just sort of like the stats kind of get spread out. Um, when when you see an individual have a really good defensive game, it's typically against a better team. Weirdly enough, um. So yeah, I'm, so gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, go, looking, I'm gonna go under. I'm gonna go under as well because looking at his stats for the year. He hasn't even he hasn't even had that once so far. He's had he's had games where he had um uh, where he had a sack or he had a um uh, tackle for a loss, but never but never anything that he got three or more in a game. So it's always one and a half sacks or one tackle for loss or half a tackle for loss. Never never more than uh two so i'm gonna go under okay carter touches nathan carter at 20 and a half uh i had here i gotta screw up here he especially recently he hasn't gotten the ball a lot and i think a lot of it is because they had to go pass happy uh 15 carries 11 carries 17 carries last time that he had 20 carries was against rutgers he uh, does it'd be it'd be a month ago he does say touch so I, I, does Carter catch the ball much? Uh, let's see here. Uh, he he gets his he gets a couple of catches here, so that, that does play a factor into it, but not enough not enough to really worry me. I'll still I'll still take the under twenty and a half here because I think they're gonna they're gonna have to have to pass the ball. So under. I agree. Okay. I'll let you take the next one here, Jared. You oh come on. You're gonna punt on a <laughs> Shaughnessy. Yes. <laughs> and the you're gonna punt because he's the punt. A Shaughnessy punts. Uh, five and a half. Uh, I feel like I have to go over here, right? That just feels low. Mm -hmm. Especially especially with this defense. Like let's let's have some confidence in this defense here. How's this, how's this defense is playing lights out, playing lights out five and a half. Yes. I will take the over on that one. Unless, unless Ohio State's causing a bunch of turnovers. I, I expect minimum six punts in this game. I'm just curious. Uh, you move on to the next one, Kyle. I want to look something up. All right. Uh, 
Kyle McCord total yards in this game, 245 and a half. Kind of going with my theme. Go gunslinging in this game. I got I gotta take the over here to to go with my to go with my theme here. So over on 245 and a half yards. You know, Kyle, it's surprisingly difficult. We're trying to find punts. We try and find punt statistics. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm moving on. I'm just curious how many punts per game he typically has. Uh, Cal McCord total yards, 245.5. I'm going to go over. Uh, Michigan State's pass defense is worse than the run defense. I think Ohio State's going to, like I said, it's time to get a bit of a bit right game a get right game with the passing defense. So let's, let's get it right. Uh, you know, like I was saying before, let's, let's get the team. Let's, let's get a Mecca Buka back into rhythm. Let's get a Mecca Buka back into the offense. Let's get the ball in the air. Let's get everyone feeling right. Offensively. You know what? Back to the punts, take them the under. That's not even, that's not even the right punter. That's not even the right punter. And unless unless something's happened to their uh, unless something's happened to their we, yes it is right no. oh there's another guy there's another guy here uh, Ryan Eckley redshirt freshman looking at last week's game seven punts against Nebraska six punts against Minnesota seven punts against Michigan. But then I look at Michael and he's had two punts against Rutgers. So I'm going to guess he he's he's injured or something. So Yeah, he is not he has not punted since October so, 14th. Yeah, let's go under, so, Kyle. But if we're going to if we're going to reverse and say the Michigan State punter with five and a half, I would take over. Oh, that's <laughs> not what it says. Uh, yep, but we are taking the under, and we will take those points, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Marv. Marvin Harrison, will he get back on track over 100 yards this game? He he has over under at 118 and a half in this game. He's Marv. Got to Got to go over here. I... Uh... I know, I, I sh- yeah, let's go over. But again, I'd like to see some of the other pass catchers brought in this game. But yeah, let's go over. Yeah, uh, Ohio State turnover differential at one and a half. I, I wish I, I wish I came better prepared with Ohio State's statistics with. With turnovers here, actually, I can, I can get that real to, quick. I know exactly where to get. Pull that, that up real quick here. We're so race against it. Rutgers, against, against Rutgers zero. Uh, against Wisconsin, they were plus two. Against Penn State, they were negative one. And then if I go back a few more here, against Purdue, they were plus two. Uh, plus two against Purdue. Uh, plus two against Maryland. Uh, zero against Notre Dame and then just to kind of finish out uh plus two against Western Kentucky plus one against Youngstown State and negative one against Indiana here so if I'm going based on recent recent um games here my money's on the under so I'll I'll go I'll go under here yeah, Ohio State uh, on the season is minus 0. 0.3 in turnovers. So, yeah, I agree. Okay. All right, that is it. That is all of Austin's over unders here. All right. Um, is there anything else you want to? Um, what am I saying? Uh, I'm saying I don't want to do plugs. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? That's what I'm saying. Uh, anything in Kyle's corner. Um, House, House State remains number one in the CFP rankings. I, I think to me that's no no surprise. I 
didn't think there was anybody. I don't think there was anybody, anything that happened last weekend that would have resulted in anybody to jump Ohio State. Now, now we can talk about it uh, this time next week, uh, depending on how games go. A lot, a lot of rank on rank games here that we will cover in tomorrow's episode. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, no, no, no surprise. Ohio State remain number one. Yeah, I mean. Georgia picked up their first like top 15 win of the year. And, you know, I think some people were maybe thinking, hoping, whatever, that that was going to be enough for Georgia to jump Ohio State. But that did not happen. Now Georgia is playing Ole Miss this week. So that will be another really nice win for them if they win. Um, well, Ole Miss is top 10, aren't they? So you you could you could ease yeah you could easily yep. see Georgia make that move next time, and yeah, and even if that happens, Ohio State still has the opportunity to beat Michigan, who may or may not be undefeated at the time. So you know that's an that would be a really good addition. Whereas Georgia beating Ole Miss will be the last big addition they have before the conference championship game. Cause it's all pretty downhill for Georgia after, after Ole Miss, I think they have Georgia tech at the end of the year, obviously. Um, and I think they have like a real cupcake next week. Or right. So, mm-hmm. um, I think, I think that's it, Jared. I think, yeah. I think we can, I think we can wrap it up right there. Cool. Cool. Uh, tonight's ending music brought to you by a Columbus based band called Mr. Moon, Mr. Moon. Um, so you can, you can check them out. Uh, if you're new here, the people listening to the podcast version will get the song. Uh, the people watching on YouTube, you have to click on the link down in the show description in order to hear the song. Um, if you go to our YouTube page, by the way, we, every time I play a song, I add it to a playlist in in a public YouTube playlist on our youtube.thesloopcast.com uh, page. So you can go there and find uh, a lot of these songs on, on YouTube. So go, go find that. So uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Mr. Moon.